Autofill is a simulation tool that pretends not to be. It lets you do things on the fly. For example, I can change the origin point even though I'm halfway through the simulation, where a traditional simulation would make you re-simulate from the start anytime a parameter is changed. Autofill is blazing fast until the caching is invalidated, and then it can be the slowest plugin you've ever used. So Autofill uses the saved result of frame n to render frame n plus one. This is caching in a nutshell, and caching is what makes Autofill so fast. But what if frame n can't be used to render frame n plus one? Then frame n plus one has to be generated from scratch, and this becomes more expensive as time, or n, increases. The easiest way to know if caching is invalidated is if each frame renders slower than the previous. So in this example, we start out really quick, I'm playing it at real time, but you'll notice that this will eventually decrease and it's only gonna get slower as we get further. And that's because caching is disabled and each frame that it renders essentially has to kind of pre-compute all the previous frames. Eventually this is gonna get down to zero and it's gonna take forever just to render a single frame. So why is caching invalidated? Well, in this particular example, I have an expression applied to the tracking of this text. Because the tracking changes, the resolution of this layer changes. If the resolution is changed, then obviously something else has changed and the cache is invalid. Now watch what happens if I turn off this animator and try and re-render. I'm rendering in pretty much double real time and that's because caching is enabled and it, and it is valid because the resolution doesn't change. As discussed, caching is the key to speed when using autofill, but there are certain situations where caching isn't possible, but in the interest of speed, autofill doesn't care and caches them anyway. For example, anytime you have animated sources, this is an example when caching shouldn't be possible. So I've got two masks and they're expanding over time using an expression. So if I want to preview what the result's gonna look like at frame 90, I don't wanna to have to render all 90 previous frames. So autofill is just gonna not care and it's gonna try and show me what the result looks like. And it's doing that there. So I can play this and it looks stable. However, if I now preview from the start, you'll see a glitch happen. Here I can see that's where the caches are joined at the frame that I first started simulating. This jitter here or flicker is the cost of autofill's fast preview. It allows you to get rapid previews so that you can iterate quickly at the cost of accuracy. To fix this, all you need to do is make sure you hit re-simulate. This way you'll get a perfect result every time, even with animated sources. And this brings us to the next topic. What does the re-simulate button actually do? Essentially, the re-simulate button is a convenient way to ensure that your caching will be correct. When you click it, it purges After Effects' cache, autofills cache, and then renders your simulation from the start of your work area. We just talked about how if I'm using an animated source layer that I need to hit re-simulate to get a correct result. However, if I'm using points, I don't need to do that at all. So for example, I can just willy nilly jump around the timeline and preview it and it's gonna be perfect. And why is that? It's because the point didn't move, it's static. However, if I now animate the position or radius of this point, I'm going to need to use the re-simulate button, otherwise my result will be incorrect. So let me just jump around the timeline here and then play from the start you can see the glitches that are occurring there. So the short of it is, if you're using anything that's animated, you want to click this re-simulate button. However, if it's not animated, you can get away with basically jumping around the timeline willy-nilly and there'll be no issues. Generally, if you're doing a complex autofill, you'll probably have a bunch of nested compositions. So how do I access the re-simulate button if the effect is pre-composed? Well, a cheat is to just basically add a dummy autofill, turn it off, and you can just use it for the re-simulate button. It's not gonna add any extra render time because it's turned off. And it gives you handy access to the re-simulate button whenever you need it. Another way to increase the speed of autofill is to reduce the number of pixels we're working on. Now that sounds like a no brainer, but in practice it's a bit more difficult. So we can do this by using continuous rasterization where possible. But note that the behavior of layers with continuous rasterization is very different. So we have a video dedicated to this topic called working with external layers. So I recommend you watch that video if you don't wanna be bamboozled. Here I have a logo with an alpha channel, but it's got a lot of empty pixels. So this is a lot of wasted pixels because those pixels are still gonna be computed. If I apply autofill and set the origin and start playing, it's gonna be going, it's gonna be going quick, but it's a waste. So what I can do is remove autofill, crop the layer, 
and then I'll drag the logo into a new comp. So just pretend we're working nested. Now I can enable continuous rasterization and that's gonna crop the layer to basically the mask that we had before. And now if I apply autofill and put it here, it's gonna render much faster. And that's because we probably got around 20% of the pixels that we had previously, maybe even less. The exception to this is now, if our logo was say rotating, note that the resolution of this layer is now changing. And because the resolution is changing, the caching becomes invalidated. So if we preview it, it's gonna be a lot slower. Well, it's still real time at the moment, but you'll notice that this is only gonna get slower. So that's it for this video. I hope you leave slightly less confused than when you started watching. If you still have a question, check out the autofill wiki where we have a frequently asked questions section. And if you can't find an answer to your question, just contact us or send us a support ticket. If your question's good, we'll add it to the list and that will expand the knowledge base and help new autofill users get their answers quicker. And if your question's bad, then we'll simply revoke your autofill license and you'll be banned from using autofill because autofill is a privilege and we're not afraid to take that privilege away from you. No, just kidding.